Captain America? Hey, that Lauren Burke. Crewof42.com. Check her out. Check out that blog. She brings it. That's why I let her hang out with me. <laughs> she knows what she's Kamaru in Ohio, Tony in South Carolina, Herb in Atlanta, Wes in Atlanta. The lines done blowed up. Lauren, you done pushed some buttons here. <laughs> the, the, the lines done blowed up. We're going to get to y'all. Stay with me, please. Uh, where, uh, where are we? We're at 41, 41 past the hour, Dr. Wormerly on here. You're going inside the issues. In uh, Jay, thank you from Florida. You, you know from whence you speak. Um, <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> any, any Jay, comments? Yeah, Jay, that's, that's a really good point. You have to keep in mind two things. One, it's early. It's real early. You know, Congress is only in its second month. And even though, yes, Alan West has said a lot of things that have been on record that people are very aware of, you know, the cream rises to the top and, and or, or adversely, you know, people are un revealed for who they are. Mm -hmm. Because he's saying enough on the record now where that's almost impossible. That, that will happen. He, the true person will be revealed. But it's early and there's a lot of stories. And, of course, we had Gabriel Giffords. There's just a lot going on obviously with the budget as well you know his, his his he will be judged by what he does for that district florida 22 and he lost his first round actually lost twice before he got elected mm -hmm. and he's a main target for the democrats so if he doesn't put out for that district it will it will come back you know the, one of the things that he and tim scott the other republican from south carolina uh, are challenged with is this idea that you want to cut money, you want to be fiscally conservative, and that's all great. But at some point, people are going to expect you to bring home the bacon. Tim Scott has a uh, situation right now where there's a port in South Carolina that the president is against, and uh, there's a fight basically between the South Carol Carolina delegation and the White House over this port, over the money. It's uh, 300 million over a decade. At any rate, you know, you've got Republicans and Democrats in South Carolina joining with each other, including Jim Clyburn. Uh, and, and Lindsey Graham over this port money. And Tim Scott, who's on the Transportation Committee, which has, you know, has to do with that issue, is arguing, hey, let's cut the budget. So when you do things like that, that's great. You want to be fiscally conservative. But those constituents, those are jobs. You expect... Real people. Those are real, real people. Real families. Right. Dinner on real tables. That's right. And if you're a United States representative, you're there to represent 700,000 people and bring home the bacon. So it's going to be very interesting to see what Tim Scott chooses. Because I can assure you that if people start losing jobs in huge chunks and things don't go well economically in that district, he's going to find himself out of a job. It's not going to matter whether he's Republican, Democrat, or whatever else. Well, Tim Skajic, but behind the heating oil issue, the cost of heating oil has dropped, and since it has dropped, therefore, not as much money is needed in the program. And I heard that, and I thought to myself, that's crap. Right. That yeah. makes absolutely no sense. The thing is, you know. Because prices are going <laughs> right. up. Right. Prices are going up. That's right. And it's not just that. You see, it's things, it's things like that and in the community. The block grant thing is huge. Yes. See, stuff like that is, is huge. That's the type, those are the types of programs that affect members of, uh, constituents of members of the Congressional Black Caucus. And you're dealing with a caucus that is dealing with unemployment in the mid-twenties in some cases. In fact, I'm trying to sit here and think if, if there is a CBC member that has unemployment that, you know, most of what happens in their districts is that, you know, one part of the district may be at 9% and another part of the district may be at 22. Conyers, <laughs> Conyers has closer to 50 exactly. in Detroit. That's right. And, and Hanson Clark, who's near his district in Michigan, uh, is another one that has ridiculous levels of unemployment. And, so, and uh, out of Los Angeles, um, Maxine. Ma Maxine. Right. She's, she's got 30% That's right. That's in, right. in South Central LA. That's and, right. right. That's right. And so for them to have to be the ones that are the only ones arguing for these things, that are, it cuts uh, to programs of, of the poor without the White House backing them up a little bit on that is sensational. It's amazing. Now, thankfully, because there is a black reporter in the White House <laughs> named April Ryan, there was a question specifically to the president on Wednesday about the poor. You mm -hmm. typically do not get any questions from the press corps on the poor. Right. You, you, if you hear a question that has anything to do with poor people in it's the a White black House, reporter that, asking that, a question. that's a black reporter or right. a Latino reporter. <laughs> you almost bet on it. In this case, it was April Ryan. And his justification for it was exactly what you said for the light heap cup, the cut for the cut on the heating aid to the poor, which was, okay, well, we've funded that program a lot before, and now, you know, maybe time to cut it, but we can revisit it, that type of thing. But just the fact, frankly, that he got the question had me, <laughs> it was sort of, I was impressed by, okay, we're talking about the poor now. Because what are we usually talking about? Bankers, right. uh, finance.